Hi, welcome to this keynote session on self-powered IoT with solar energy harvesting. Um, my name is Dan Steeler. I'm going to be presenting today, uh, talking about different aspects of energy harvesting and then how solar can be used as an energy harvesting generator um, and what, uh, what energy harvesting can do for you and your applications. Um, I'm currently the president of Powerfilm Solar. Uh, we manufacture thin film flexible solar modules uh, for uh, different applications, uh, anything from uh, trucking to IoT to military applications. And you'll see uh, some of the stuff that we manufacture today. So I, the first question to ask is why energy harvesting? Um, energy harvesting is a way to replace batteries, basically, or reduce the size of your batteries. You still, in general, with the energy harvesting situation, need some sort of storage element, be it a uh, battery or a supercapacitor or just even something like a ceramic or electrolytic capacitor. Um, but the goal is to reduce the amount of batteries or amount of size of the battery that you need to have uh, or move to a rechargeable battery instead of a primary battery. And so first, the first thing is battery life. So dead batteries um, come at a cost. You have to replace them. Uh, you have to maintain those systems. If you're looking at large uh, deployable networks of sensors, that means that there's a significant cost going around of replacing batteries as they uh, become old and no longer have any power in them. Um, it also, in certain applications, like in class one hazardous environments, uh, creates more complication because when you're replacing batteries in a class one type environment, um, you know, that, that operation can be a sparking type operation, which means that there are special safety considerations, considerations to take it into effect or to look into um, when you're doing that sort of thing. So having something that's perpetually powered uh, helps a lot. Um, also, flexibility of installation location. You know, if you've got solar instead, um, you can install stuff without having to run hard power lines or any of that kind of thing. You can just basically use energy harvesting as the primary uh, sustainable power source and put up the sensors or whatever systems you have in different places without, without having to have an electrician break into the grid or run power or anything like that. Um, and so, Energy harvesting is really a way to reduce the size of the batteries you need and uh, ch change from having months of battery life to you know something that's perpetually powered 10 years uh, without maintenance or even longer. Um, batteries also have a limited power capacity, which uh, limits what you can do with your IoT device. You know, uh, in all cases, you've got to take a careful look at what your features and functionality are for um, the system you have and make sure that the power is sized appropriately. You know, the more bandwidth you're using uh, with a, um, like a BLE radio, the more uh, power it's gonna take. Um, and so if you move from BLE to Wi-Fi to cellular, all of those take uh, an increasing amount of power because of either bandwidth or the range of the transmissions uh, that kind of stuff. So sizing the right radio to the uh, energy harvesting system becomes very important. Um, also peak power, uh, when you're sizing your battery for an IoT system, you have to take into account what kind of peak power draw you're gonna have from the system, because um, that's gonna dictate how big or small your battery can be and at what pulse duration. Um, batteries are also bulky. They uh, the circuitry that can go into your device can be very small, very low profile, lightweight. But when you start adding, adding a battery, even like a pouch, small pouch cell battery, it can take up a significant amount of volume. And so some of that weight and size can be offset by using energy harvesting, and, and in this case, specifically solar. An energy har harvesting system consists of three specific component, or three basic components. Uh, first is an energy generator. It can be solar, piezoelectric, thermal, electric, RF, um, an energy harvesting circuit, uh, which has a few important features, things like voltage matching to your source and a very high efficiency, and then some sort of storage element, a battery or capacitor. Uh, when we look at energy generators, uh, solar 
can give you between microwatts and watts, depending on where it's deployed and the size of the panel. Piezoelectric systems typically run in the microwatt to milliwatt range. Thermoelectrics can be in the microwatt to watt range, again, depending on how big of a system you have and what's available for the uh, heating or the thermal source. And then RF are typically in the milliwatt range. Um, the most important requirements of the energy harvesting circuit is converting your input power to the uh, power that's usable by a storage element. Um, and so to do that, uh, there's different methods. Um, when you look at solar, you can actually do that with some pretty simple um, circuits. Uh, and then you can move up into more complex ICs as well. There are many ICs available for energy harvesting right now out there, and they have a lot of different benefits. They can do things like PowerPoint tracking of your uh, solar or your piezoelectric generators. They have very low, low turn on voltages. So even when there's not a lot of voltage or power available, they're still able to collect power. Um, they can give you regulated outputs over and under voltage protections. Um, you can even get fine ICs that have multi harvester inputs. Uh, they can come in buck or boost topologies, depending on the systems that you're trying to run. Uh, they can get power output, status outputs to show if your power is good to a microcontroller or BLE device. Um, they typically run over 90% efficient uh, and have, can have integrated battery charging or even uh, primary batteries as a backup for uh, the system in case your energy harvesting, harvester itself isn't producing enough power or can't produce power for a time. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of features that come in the current energy harvesting IC world. Uh, storage elements, uh, some of the considerations go along with storage elements are the need for peak power. You know, is it peak power that's continuous? Is it uh, peak power that's pulsed? If you're doing a pulse discharge, uh, say it's a pulse discharge at 10 milliamps for a BLE radio, um, even at, at a two second rest interval between pulses or between radio connections, uh, you can still get easily 10 to 12 times the life of what you would if you had that 10 milliamp continuous draw on a battery just because you have that two second relaxation time on your battery. Um, so understanding what the application uh, requires is very important when, when determining how much solar and how much battery or storage element you'll need for a perpetual system. And you'll see here, this picture shows one of the dev kits that we offer. It's the, our dev EPs series. Um, it has panels that comes with it that are indoor light type panels, outdoor light type panels. You can see you have a little battery storage element and then the uh, energy harvesting IC all in one package. So uh, we offer a number of dev kits that'll help um, expedite your development process. Our core technology for small IoT energy harvesting systems is a thin film amorphous silicon PV material. Uh, it's manufactured using a high throughput roll to roll process. Um, and we can have recipes that offer indoor and outdoor light performance. Um, it's highly customizable, and that comes from the roll-to-roll -roll process. The cells that we make are made through a screen printing and laser process, and so it's easy for us to change the, the size, the number of cells, the shape. Um, you can do things like circular type panels, um, whatever, whatever meets your application uh, by just changing the, the screens and the print pattern that's used. Um, they're ultra thin, you know, as thin as six mil, Thick. Uh, they have high specific power density because of their on a film substrate. You know, you, you're going to get see like 170 uh, microwatts per gram at 200 lux versus like a glass type panel of similar technology might be 15 microwatts per gram. Uh, you can bend them around about a half inch radius. And uh, there's a number of ways that they can be SMT compatible. We can put on backside contacts, front side contacts. There can be tabs that you can fold over through a through hole in a board. Um, they can be mounted with conductive epoxies or um, with standard off the shelf uh, flex circuit connectors. They can be used to uh, mount to a circuit board and then apply the panel to the connectors. 
Um, laminates have a temperature range between 60 and 80 C, depending on what the laminate is. So they're quite robust in the uh, temperatures that they're capable of withstanding. Some of the applications that we've seen in, in deployed material in are BLE beacons and tags, uh, things like asset tracking within a, a plant, uh, looking at boxes or pallets and where are assets moving inside your plant. Um, wireless sensors for you know, environmental monitoring or predictive maintenance. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of sensors, or there's becoming, there's getting to be more and more applications out there where uh, people are looking at vibration of a system and trying to predict uh, when the system needs maintenance based on changes in vibration. Um, we also, our solar can also um, work with things like uh, gateways. So the interface between your Bluetooth device and the plant and the cloud. Um, those tend to be higher power, but the solar can be um, larger area to provide more power. It can also be positioned underneath uh, light fixtures, you know, fluorescent or LED lighting that's already existing in the plant to get a reliable power source without having to run more power um, into the plant or hardwire a system in. Uh, there's an applications for field monitoring for soil, nutrient, moisture, or illumination, um, looking at your cattle herds, herd monitoring, looking at animal health and monitoring temperature and other habits, eating habits, um, to try to catch health problems early when they can be remedied easily before the uh, health problems in the cattle or herd become uh, severe. Uh, also smart locks, bike locks, door locks, uh, real estate locks, all those types of things um, can be uh, powered with a solar type energy harvesting system. And then e-paper, e-paper like electronic shelf labels is another application that uh, solar energy harvesting fits into. Uh, just a quick run through here. This is a indoor solar BLE uh, demonstration kit that we offer or that we have. Uh, it shows that the system can be used in dim lighting, indoors, have a con consistent BLE connection, one second connection interval. Um, you can flash an LED to, to show operation. You can connect to your smartphone. Uh, this one actually is batteryless, so it just uses surface mount capacitors for the storage element. 100% um, waterproof, you can see it in the jar of water there. Um, and it just is an extremely flexible, durable, integrated package. So to kind of summarize, solar energy harvesting solutions can extend the battery life with perpetual source of light um, from indoor or outdoor light sources, expand functionality and resilience with increased continual power available, and then enable compact low profile electronics with thin, flexible, high performance PV material. And then a little blurb on power film. You know, if you're looking at doing some energy harvesting with solar, uh, PowerFilm is a great uh, place to go. PowerFilm has a proven record of high quality custom design um, solar solutions across multiple industries and technologies. You can be confident that what we provide will meet or exceed the needs of your requirements. And no matter what your application, you know, we have knowledge in, and experience in matching and, and determining what power requirements are for IoT and remote power needs. Uh, we have many standard size electronic component panels. We have development kits with TI, EPs, and Nordic energy harvesting and BLE radios for indoor and outdoor solar panels. Uh, we have a blog that offers a wealth of knowledge and information on solar and IoT. Um, and so please contact us. Uh, we'd love to help you create a sustainable, low cost, low maintenance solution to power your IoT devices. Thank you.